Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Folks, again, this is Bruce Broussard, your host here at Oregon Voters Digest. As you can see from the screen and the presentation right off the front, the branding is, we sort of like update, upgraded the, the branding a bit and whatever, but we're in for some exciting times here coming in the future here as far as the Oregon <clears throat> Voters Digest. As you note, we're getting right into the elections, and I was just reminded my co-host here, Renee, Renee Kimball, about we've got about eight weeks to do this stuff. There's going to be some heavy, there's going to be some heavy times here, especially in the state of Oregon. I mean, we got the national situation. We got the national situation, but the look like President Trump is kind of like taking the lead on that with CNN and Fox. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is that um, we're going to be doing some neat things. We're going to be educating you about what's going on in Oregon, and uh, again, we're going to be targeting probably the largest county and the largest city in the state in our state, and that is Portland, Oregon, and Multnomah County. And they've got all sorts of activities in, in that arena, big time. And there are a number of measures, and, and in fact, uh, in fact. Um, uh, uh, Renee was just telling me that uh, she's already busy uh, on some measures right now that she's very much involved in. And I don't know how many more is going to be on there, but I'm guessing it's going to be all kinds of stuff. But anyway, uh, we got some yes. things. We got we got a lot of things going, and and I thought what we'll do, we'll just have sort of a general discussion in, in this particular hour to give you some sense of uh, what to be expecting here in the next eight weeks or whatever, and what's going to be appearing on the Oregon Voters Digest. Now, as you know, we got we've got four shows. We've got four shows on the, in the month, and one of those shows is going to be dedicated to veterans. As you notice, I've been wearing my paraphernalia and whatever, and we're going to be basically reaching out to vets. There's another organization, by the way, No Vets Left Behind in Oregon, and we're going to be vetting out all of these service organizations for vets outside of the VA, you know, and, and just, you know, just basically looking at them and, and sharing with you uh, what are some of the uh, services that are available to veterans, and hopefully that will get out to and resonate with individuals that haven't signed up for these services or whatever. And then, and, and from a futuristic standpoint, maybe develop a, some sort of a booklet that sort of lists all of these organizations, if you will, yep. along that line. This is the VA stuff as far as benefits. Yeah. But the bottom line is that uh, we're going to have mm -hmm. some exciting things about um, about veterans. And now that, that announcement, by the way, will probably be about another. It's probably about another two weeks out about another two weeks out specifically for the veterans show and to the one i'll probably have the vfw with me as a as kind of the co-host they're the veterans of foreign war and so the whole idea is that uh, they are very much involved in the in the in the va as far as benefits are concerned and they do a lot of other things you might have seen them with the with the with the uh with the red poppies in the front of the stores yeah, the red poppies yeah, yeah the red poppies in the stores and that's the vfw they put well out the contract with the VA to basically uh, put the paperwork together for the vets that are looking for services and whatever. So anyway, that's going to be coming up. And then uh, we got three other shows, and one of those shows is going to be dedicated naturally to the politics of it all. We're going to probably have a lot of candidates here, and we're going to be interviewing these candidates. We're going to probably take those uh, voters' pamphlets, and, and I got a person like Renee here that's going to make sure, if you will, that uh, whatever, whatever is said in those voters' pamphlets is fact. And yeah. They, they got, well, no, I'm not wasting my time. Fun. That's going to be pretty some much. Fun. That's, that's why a I'm lot saying. of it's she's not, not going to be wasting the time because she's going to go right through it. So if you're going to come on the show, and if you are a candidate, you're going to make sure that that, it, that your your resume reflects what you are. Well, and, and that's something that's on the sideboard. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, it's going to be very interesting. And the other thing that we're going to be talking targeting, and we're going to focus on, and we're going to have a candidates fair. Almost like League of Women Voters, you know, for the candidates and aspect of it. We're going to do that right here, at uh, here at. Uh, I, I know I'm still in. I'm still heavy in, into PCM. You know, PCM. I, I, I can never <coughs> I, open I, signal. Yeah, it'll be open signal. <coughs> but we're going to be doing a candidates <coughs> fair here Unusual. with all of the candidates uh, here, and it's going to be brought to you by the Oregon Voters Digest, and we're going to do that during the week, and we're going to give every candidate the opportunity to come and speak. And then we're going to constantly So every those. every candidate now has the opportunity to come and go. volunteer for the show. Now look at you. And if yeah. they don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but, but anyway. We'll wonder about whether they really want to be 
oh, talking they, to people. They they want to do that. We're going to make sure that that because you know it, it, it's it's that's a very serious piece. But anyway, I want to, I want you. I just I'm starting out with that way and and do our doing our little <clears> general <throat> discussion in this particular show. We may bring up some of those other things about ideas and whatever. Okay. But the idea is that uh, I've got Renee here with me. Just to give you an idea that Renee has. I mean, she's been in this business for a long, long time. She's been here uh, at PCM Open Signal now for a number of number of years, and um, uh, she's got good background. She knows politics. She's been involved in politics. I don't know whether I'd time. say I know uh, politics. Uh, she's graduated. I smell things out in politics. Uh, she's she's really into politics aspect of it, so it's going to be very enjoyable. Yeah. And we'll probably have some other entities, whatever. But the fact yeah. of the matter is, is that uh, uh, we want to welcome her to the to this table. She might just want to just do the politics of it all, and then these other two shows will do something else or, or whatever. She might be a host, and she might be a she might be a moderator in some of these candidates' fair thing or whatever. Uh, she might, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> but the whole idea is that we are going to have something that really communicates to the voters as to who these people are as, if they're running for office. And also, what are these ballot measures and things? For instance, speaking I'll give you, of ballot I'll, measures, yeah, speaking of ballot measures, <coughs> let's, let's just let's start, start off with this number way. five. Okay, fine. Now, now five is not the first one. Before, you get, one. before you get into that, dude, what? For, for the layperson that's sitting out there, what is a ballot measure? Okay, well, Talk there's actually three different kinds of ballot measures. Okay, number one is the initiative, and that's where. That's what we normally think of as ballot measures. That's where somebody says, hey, I've got this great idea. I want to get it on the ballot. They sponsor a ballot petition, which is like, it, uh, they all look like this on the back. Okay. They'll all say different things, but they'll all have the same things on the back of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You'll have a, a space in here where they'll have a sponsorship. So okay. you're a citizen, you're a person, you're an organization, and you want to put something on the ballot. You get together, and you get signatures to get this on the ballot. Mm. That one has a two-step process, and I'll get back to that one, but I don't want to confuse you right now. So there's one that's the citizens decide they want something on the ballot, yeah, okay. and they put it up. That's called an initiative. That's an initiative. That's an initiative. Okay. Then you okay. have a referral. A referral. A fer referral is when either uh, a representative or a senator from the state of Oregon decides, hey, I think this is a good ballot measure, and they want to put it on the ballot. Oh, okay. So there's an initiative from the people, a referral from the legislators. Can they do, so that's they, do, they do it both? Oh, yeah. They do well, they no, you can't do both. It's either one or the other. One or the other. Legislators or citizens. Mm, mm. So you, they, you know, legislators sign on with other legislators. Citizens sign on with other citizens okay, okay. to do initiatives. So it's the same thing. Wanting to get your good idea on the ballot, ah. but this one comes from the legislators, and lots more of them, and they cost a lot more money usually. Mm. And these, this one over here, comes from the citizens. Okay, okay. So those are those two. But if the, good, you, if, the, if the good idea comes from the citizens, and they want to get involved and take the credit, if you will, they can't just say, "Hey, for heck with you," and we're just going to go with, with I'm going to, we're going to go with the language that I edit. No, that isn't how it happens. Okay. The state, all right, if it comes to, for, well, let's let's do the third one first, and then we'll go oh, back okay. to that. All right. okay. The third one is a referral. Okay. So the legislatures pass something that the citizens decide, hell no, we don't like this idea. This sucks. We mm -hmm. want this guy out. Mm -hmm. So they initiate what's called a referendum, and that can rescind or take away what the legislators have, have already put in place. And there's actually two of those on the ballot, hmm. this measure, this this uh, term. So there's two referendums on the ballot to get those referrals from the legislators that got passed, because they did get on the ballot, mm -hmm. they got passed, so they want them taken away and thrown out. Okay. So there's there's two referrals and three initiatives. So okay. there's three things from the people. And two things from the people that says, hell no, we don't like what you did. Okay. So the, refer re so the referrals are done by the... By the legislators. Le legislators, okay. Right. Re they and do referrals. And then the people... And they pass it among themselves and okay. send it on and say, yay, we like it. Sometimes they let us vote on them. Okay. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> so, the, and then w going back to the initiative, which was the people have decided right. this is a good idea, we want okay. it on the ballot. That's a two-step process. The first step is you have to collect a thousand signatures. 
that say, yeah, a thousand people think this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then you get the okay to collect mm, between 89 and 112,000 signatures to get it actually on the ballot. How do they determine that number? Good question. Um, has to do with some kind of representation that it, it, it has to do with your representation in the Senate, and I'm not sure exactly how mm -hmm. that works, but mm -hmm. the, there's a ratio, and it's between 88,000 to 129, I think, and 112,000. Mm -hmm. There's two different kinds that, okay. that you have. That These are all, I think all of these are 89,000. Maybe one of them's 112. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm, no, one of them's 58. The referrals, the uh, referendums are only 58,000. The, the referendum. Yeah, the referendums are only 58,000, but the initiatives, you have 1,000 signatures that says, hey, we're serious, we want to do this, and then after the 1,000 signatures, you get your, your big signature sheets, and then you have to collect 88,000. But the referral from this, are they less than, as far as the numbers, for gathering, yeah. or is it just something? The, no, the referral... From, from the... Not quite sure of the referral. The referral is, is they, um, the legislature may refer any bill it passes to voters for approval. Okay. And so that's they, just, that's just, they say, we passed it, we think it's a good idea, and we're going to let you vote on it, by the uh, way. Then, See, then, they pass a boatload that we don't get to vote on. But then if the citizens say, heck no, they can do their own thing through this process, right? To the other Well, process. that's, this is, Yeah. Okay. 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 It's yeah. That it's it's a little bit more complex than that. I want to. I okay. don't want to confuse what okay. we're trying okay. to get across okay. that people can understand. Okay. And this is the the three step process. Okay. So, the thing with the the signatures is with the initiative that comes from the people. If you sign the first one for a thousand signatures, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can't sign the second one. Really? No. Will they, they count? Can't. They be counted? Will they be counted? Well, what happens is they audit them. So they take sheets and they look for duplicates. Okay. If they find a duplicate, they wipe out 400 signatures. Okay. That's why you want to get lots okay. more. But they, than they just will be counted with, with the initiative that's that's being discussed. Let's put it that way. Uh, not if they find a duplicate. If they find a duplicate, no. The the one see it would be considered a duplicate. So you signed the first one for a thousand. That, that gets you're it. done. Okay. You shouldn't sign okay. that one again. Okay. okay. To complicate matters, this one will have one number, that one will have another number. Okay, okay. So, you you know, this is why I invented this card. Okay. So you can keep track <laughs> okay, okay. of what's going on, okay. and you don't get so confused as to what you're signing. Yeah, but that's the only one where there's a problem. Okay. However, you have to be careful to remember which one you have signed, mm -hmm. because, again, if you sign it twice, they happen to catch your signature. You've invalidated 400 mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. signatures. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's really good to keep track. What numbers did I get? Five, 11, 14, okay. 17. What, okay. what number did I keep right. track of? So you have to really keep track okay. of what have I signed and what I haven't signed mm -hmm. in order to know, be responsible mm -hmm. for signing your, your Now, the initial ballot. sponsor for that, the meaning the person that goes, what do we have to do? They go down to the Secretary of State's office to get this? It's a really long, involved process. There mm -hmm. are people who sort of dedicate themselves to doing it over and over on, on all sides of politics, okay? Mm -hmm. There are the the people who sponsor petitions on all sides of politics because they know how to do it. Okay. And it's not an easy process. It's a very onerous process. It's a very costly process. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get an initiative on the ballot, uh, unless you've probably got $20,000 hanging about as spare change, you can just blow don't even think about it. Really? Yeah. I mean, mean? Y you have to have money to do this. Well, what about, uh, uh, well, is there anybody at the Secretary of State's office that will help you understand what that's all about? How do you do that? Yes and no. Do they help you fill it out? Well, or? yes and no. Um, the thing is that if, if you get to the stage of having done an initiative, you're sort of expected to know what you're, what you're doing and how to do it and figure it out yourself or pay for it to be done. Okay, hmm. and the political parties, mostly uh, by the vast majority, the Democratic Party in this state, and to a very limited um, set up, to a very limited degree, the Republican Party, but mostly the Democratic Party, have these 
vast organizational structures to do this kind of stuff, get people elected, get people on farm teams, get them in rotation in this position and then that position and then that position. Then we run them for a legislator and then we run them for governor. There's a whole kind of machinery that goes on with this whole political mm -hmm. thing. But like I said, mostly in Oregon particularly, only on the Democratic side. The, the Republican side is pretty dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And the only reason, my personal opinion is, the only reason it is, exists to, is to keep up the appearances of a two-party system. Because mm -hmm. I don't think we have one here in Oregon. I think mm -hmm. it's a joke. Mm -hmm. And that we really run everything through the, um, the neighborhood associations, particularly here in Multnomah County. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting about this initiative process. That's the people aspect of it. And they're basically mm -hmm. reacting yeah. and saying, I'm concerned about yeah. this. And yeah. then the idea is that you would think yeah. that the folks who are elected from that particular area that they're from, you would think that they would sign off on this. Well, thing. It, it doesn't quite work that way mm -hmm. because it does split That's along referral, political huh? principles, like okay. the number five. Okay, number five is the first one. This uh, states that you must be a citizen in order to vote okay. in the state of Oregon. Okay. And that actually is not, it's legally true, but in fact, it's far from the truth. Because in this state, you can literally sign up online. I could do it right now as my dog. Right now, I could do it. And nobody's going to check anything. Hmm. And I can vote in everything except federal elections. And that's it. I don't have to show any ID. I don't have to give any driver's license. I don't have to do anything. I can just sign up to vote. No problem. Now, if I want to vote in federal elections or if I happen to be a responsible person, I give them a driver's license number. Hmm. So, so one. <laughs> so yeah, you want to sign up a dog? We can do it right now. No, but, but my point is that if you if you just sign up for the state aspect of it, yeah, you're saying those are not verified. No, no, no. They don't have they, to be I verified. That's what they did no. in the county. Well, here's their signatures are verified, but their identity isn't. Do you understand? I, mean, I I was part of voter voter fraud. Uh, you know, spotting voter fraud, and I found 400 voters who didn't exist. Because no one can tell me that, um, you know, you've been voting 14 years after you're dead. Okay? I'm sorry. I, hmm. found, I found voter after voter after voter who had died and was still voting. Oh, I had perfect, glorious voting record. Did they vote Democrat or Republican? Who cares? <laughs> they voted. Somebody voted their ballot. I found, uh, I found, I think, 600 locations where the ballot was going to a post office drop, not, not a post office box from the, the post office department, but one of those mail drop places, right? And I found things like three out of the four people at the post box drop had the same first name, or uh, all four of them had the same birth date. Yeah, right. Hmm. Okay. So there's all kinds of voter fraud going on out there. It has not been cleaned up. The only way to clean up voter fraud is to purge the voter rolls, which hasn't been done in about three decades now. You know, in all due respect, I, I was reading an article in the Oregonian a couple of days ago, I guess, and Dennis Richardson, the Secretary of State, was, was quoted as saying that, because I think the Trump administration had asked him, had said that... Um, that there were a lot of voter fraud going on yeah, in the state of Oregon. Just a little and bit. He, and he said there was only 40. Well. There was only 40 people, I guess. Yeah, 40, yeah. 40 out of thousands of people. Who I've voted. got 400. You so, know, want to look so, at my record? So no I guess, problem. I guess the question I'm asking is that now they do have a record on every voter here. I mean, when you file, I mean, don't they have a record? They had to check to see whether or not those people were, 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 were real, legit. No, there's no, there's no, well, there's no record they, to check that these people are legitimate. Okay, there's no process to really? go out and check that people are legitimate. No, there isn't. That's what the uh, Voter Integrity Project was all about. It said voter fraud. That's Voter Integrity Project. This is interesting. So, uh, so there's, no, there's no identification. Seriously, get your phone. No, no, no. You can no, go no, there no, do no, anybody. No. You can go through the whole process. You don't have to follow through because it's a felony. Don't do that. But you can do it, and you're, you've registered a voter. Yeah. All the homeless are, are registered. All the homeless are registered. A lot of them, even mm -hmm. though they don't live anywhere, but they're registered, supposedly. I, how do you and, and know whether a homeless person is registered or not, or whether it's some bogus so, name? So when you register, you can just give any number, whatever. You can just put any address. Is that what you're saying? They don't verify or certify the No. Address. 
They no. Don't say, uh, no. They, do they ask you for no. your social security number at all? Then, when, uh, let's see, I don't know whether your social security number is in there. No, I don't think your social security number is in there. But what they do ask for is a driver's license number. Okay. And if you give a driver's license number, then that's your bona fides. That's the one that validates you, and yeah, you get to vote in federal elections. Well, in that particular so case, basically, they do ask you for your, your, if you got a driver's license, they ask you for a social security number. They ask you I'm for pretty address. sure it doesn't ask you for a social security number because, yeah, oh, yeah no. Your driver's you know, license, oh, yeah. No, oh, but no. your driver's license is your bona fides because you have, to have, you have to have your social security number to get your driver's that's license. That's right, that's right. So, and, and, a, and, a, and a bona fide in address. theory, you have a real driver's license. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have a, you in gotta theory. But anyway, back to the ballot measures. Hmm. Just a quick summation right. of them. Number five is, again, from the citizens who decided that it would really be a good idea if you were a citizen to vote. Obviously, for this reason. That any you could register your canary. I'm sorry. So, yeah. I would like to have some bona fides that the person who's actually filling this crap out on OregonVotes.org, dot com, is actually a real human being. I'd really like to know that. So yeah, I'm all for Measure Five. So it needs a hundred. No, this one needs one hundred seventeen thousand five hundred seventy-eight. So who, signatures. Who, who, are, who are the, the signers? The, the, who are the, uh, uh, the, lead, who are the lead, lead people? Yeah, who are the lead people? Are who, uh, Mike this? Nearman and James Bugle. And James Bugle. James okay. Bugle, who's uh, an James environmental Bugle. lawyer here in town. Yeah, he, in fact, he happens to be the president yeah. of the Multnomah County Republicans, yep. right? Yeah, in the, in, uh, in, in Multnomah Portland, County Multnomah Republican County. Party. Is the and Nearman is a representative up in southeast, or I mean, southeast Oregon. Yep. Well, he's uh, he's a, an environmental lawyer who deals in environmental law and a lot of other areas. I, James deals in so many areas, but no, he's I'm very Nearman. Nearman. Oh, Nearman. Nearman's a representative. Yes. Yes. He's a representative. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go. And so he's sponsored the, to come. So, well, so that well, one's for uh, citizen. Uh, you have to be a citizen. And what was to that vote. again? And what was that? Again? That's number five. A, you have to be a citizen to vote. You have to be a citizen okay, cool. to vote. That might be somebody we might. So write, you know, I and personally, I think know. I think that's a very you should at piece. least be vested as a citizen. Oh, in order to vote. Look Other like, countries, look like there are... Look like that should have been done a long time ago. Well... Wow. You know, there are a lot of people who would argue, and I can give you their reasons, but, you know. Oh. Number 22... Okay, what is that one? ...is one that uh, declares Oregon a non-sanctuary state. Okay. Now, there's been some talk recently about it isn't going to matter whether you're a sanctuary state or not. You still get the bribery from the federal government. But again, I consider being a sanctuary state a direct affront to my very close neighbors who live across the street from me, who at 85 years old have now have to travel to Turkey to see their son. It's an affront to the trouble and the hardships these people went through to get to this country to make this a sanctuary state. I'm sorry. How'd they get here? Clawing their way here and clawing their way out of Iraq. So, I'm sorry, I, f I consider being a sanctuary state an affront to people like, you know, our, our neighbors. And these are, these are basically undocumented workers, right? Uh, no, these are, the, these are people that says, oh, come on down, kumbaya, anybody can come to this state, and we don't care where you came from or what you did or how you got here. Hmm. And the thing is that I know Amjad and Zia's story before, during, and after they got to this country. And by God, it is an affront to them that you can just sneak across the border or just come on in and pay a few bucks and get into the country and kumbaya, you're as good as they are. I'm sorry, no. Mm -hmm. And so that's why no sanctuary state. Okay, oh, okay. So who, that's number 22. Who's, who's the principal on that? Piece? And the principals on this one are Mike Nierman, Sal Esquivel, Mm -hmm. Ha ha! Doesn't sound like an a you know, an Irish name to me, and Greg Barreto. Oh, so Beretta. I know Barreto. Barreto is a representative. Yeah, and, then, and, and uh, then Sal Escabel. I'm not sure who mm -hmm. Mr. Escabel is, but okay. um, you know they're okay. not. Okay. You know. Okay. People who get here by hard work and sacrifice are not keen on being a sanctuary state, folks. So that's the real truth. Mm -hmm. The next one is a referendum. Now, a referendum rescinds what the legislatures did. With the legislature. Yeah. Because the legislature was the one that actually... 
They passed created, something. They created a bill, created and, said, a bill and said, and said, well, we're not going to even let you vote on it. Kumbaya, we're going to. Oh, really? oh yeah, yeah. Okay, they really? do it all the time. Let's talk a little bit about that. They do that all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, look, this is a good idea. And think of how much money we could make. Yeah, let's pass it. Interesting, interesting. Oh. Okay, that's what they do. That's well, what they spend a lot of time doing. the discussions we're going to have here okay. on the Oregon Voters Digest? Now, this, this is awesome. a referendum, okay. which means, hell no, we don't think that's a good idea. Ah, as, okay. as far as the as yeah. far as the sanctuary city piece. No, no, now, this, this is, is this is another one. This, this is, is another one. This one here. Oh, no, this is sanctuary as as an initi initiative. Yes, that's an initiative. Again, that's the people. people that's saying, the people. Okay. We think it'd be nice if okay. you were a citizen if okay. you got to vote okay. in this country. Right. I okay. don't know. Okay. Now you the first one. one, the first one, the first referendum I want to talk about is three hundred one, and this is the one I call it the gotcha. Gotcha. Gotcha referendum. Okay. okay. What does it mean? What, what are they doing? HB 2391. What is that? That <laughs> was get... House Bill. House Bill, get right. it? Okay. House Bill. Yeah, right. They okay. initiated it. 2391 said, we're going to tax those horrible, terrible insurance companies. Boo. Let's put a tax on them. And everybody went, yay. And they referred it to the people and they said, see, we're going to tax all these horrible insurance companies. And the people went, yay, we'll vote on that. And they forgot to read it because in the bill it says, oh, and by the way, we're going to let the insurance companies get the money back from you. They said that in the bill? Yeah. And who are these people? Let's start Well, this is, you know, the, the, remember, the people are the, who, the who did, the, 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 did the dirty are the, in, the are the, legislators, okay? Oh, the, okay. They passed a, a bill. Okay. They, they passed a bill. They passed a bill. Referral. They That's passed a, referral, a bill and right? said, we're going to make those dirty insurance companies pay all this money. Okay. But we're going to let you get the money back from the people. Okay. <laughs> and then the people said, hey, wait a minute. Now, and they referred so, it to the someone, people. Someone caught it. They re no, they didn't. See, they, refer they referred it to the people, and the people said, yes, yes, let's beat up on those insurance companies. Okay. And they passed it, okay. but they didn't read it. Because in the bill it said, oh, and you're going to pay for it anyway. Okay, then the people read it. They didn't, they didn't read it. They no, didn't read it. No, other people said, you dummies, look what you've done. What well, other people like whom? Oh, uh, let's Elected see. Elected officials who, or what? Who, say, who passed Who's, this who one? Passed? Oh, this is Julie Parrish, Sal Esquivel, and uh, Cedric Hayden. These are the people who sponsored this bill and said, ah, silly people. Okay. You let them pass you another tax. Okay. You believe the legislators the again. That. Okay, okay. okay? And, and Julie Parrish is a legislator. She said, you and, believe and, these idiots again. Okay, and who passed it initially? In the, um, in the I don't know who was behind 2391, but okay. somebody who wants to spend your money. <laughs> were, they, were they Republican, Democrats, or who what? Who knows? I really don't know, don't and you'd know. have to go look it up. All I'm saying is, who's stupid enough to pass it? We were. Well, it'd be neat to have that person. Well, the thing is that, that we need to st we need to start reading the bills and stop passing yeah. the crap. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but read you know, the bill and you wouldn't have passed yeah, it. But you make a good point there because, in all due respect, one of the things that I think, as far as, far as a voter, even myself, from that standpoint, I'd like to know who, as one say, who was initiated to to begin with. Well, see, that's always that's always there, but people never pay any yeah, attention that's what I'm to saying. it. And that okay? needs to be known. Well, nobody wants to bring it out because if you look at both sides, you're going to see relatively the same people because basically those are the same activists doing all the work. Hmm. But the point is that it's up to everyday person to educate themselves to know what's on this little card. Hmm. If hmm. you don't know the difference between an initiative, a referendum and a referral, why are you voting? Mm, mm, mm. I'll tell you what, we'll take a minute and then we'll go on and take a short break and, uh, and then we'll just come back to this. I think it's very interesting, okay? Can we take a short break? We'll just go on and take a short break and we'll be right back with you. I think this is very interesting. Boy, I tell you, the future of the Voters Digest is awesome. I like yeah, it. Yeah, well, these... Take a short break. We'll see you right back. Yeah. They're working on it right now. Okay. They're not taking any pictures. There you go. See that?
Welcome back, folks, to Oregon Voters Digest. Boy, I tell you, I hope you like that first half hour here with me and Renee, and we've just been talking about things in all due respect that the voter, the average voter doesn't know. No. They don't know, and that's what... Don't and that's know one about the, the process, don't know about a, the things. And that's one of the things that the Voters Digest has been doing for years, for years. And, you know, what is that, what are those processes, if you will, to actually get to the point, one person, one vote, right? You got me? And on issues that are relevant, if you will. Here we go. I'm using the word that you make one, one person, one vote. One not person, one, one dog, person. one vote. One person, one vote aspect of it. But anyway, just just that first 30 minutes, Renee, you, you sort of educated me just right off the bat. And I'm sure that they would appreciate mm -hmm. it. But what we're going to do, we're going to go beyond that point, too. We're going to bring these folks here who basically signed off on this stuff. Yeah. No point, and have them discuss it, and we'll discuss it with them, just yeah. to make sure we keep definitely up, right? because That's I'd right. like to talk to some of these people about some of the, especially 301 is the one that I'm okay. really I've spent a lot of time collecting. Okay. So we're back for. with you right now, and we're just going to go back where we started, where we stopped, and and we got another initiative okay. on the table here. This what, is 301, this? and this is a a referendum again. This is the people saying hell no. To this is state. a referendum, right? This is a referendum. And these are the people that are saying... Hell no, we didn't like what you passed. Okay, okay, This is okay. the people saying to the legislatures, didn't like your idea. Ah, okay. And which one is this? And this is the one on the Health Care Act. Health Care, who signed it? Okay. That's fine. Uh, Who's the this principal? Is, they, they uh, the principals on this one are Julie Parrish, who is a representative, Sal Esquivel, and Cedric Hayden. I don't okay. know either of those it, two people. And, okay. And this is about... Um, there was a, a measure passed last year by the House, House Bill 2391, and it was to put a tax on health care. And the idea was, boo, we're going to tax those nasty insurance companies, mm -hmm. and um, you're going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to make them pay more. Well, that's what they told everybody. But when the bill came out and everybody signed off on it, it says, yes, let's tax those insurance companies. Nobody bothered to read the bill because hidden in the bill was the prerogative of the insurance companies to get the money back from the people. Right. So it's just a backdoor tax. That's what we were just talking about. Yeah, one, it's just a backdoor tax. That's different than the other one we talked about? Was this the other one? Yeah, this is, no, this is different. This is a, a, just a backdoor tax on okay. your health care. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And it was so old to them by saying, this will provide free abortions for everyone in Oregon. Well, hello, folks. If you're in Oregon, you can get a free abortion anytime, anywhere, for just about any reason already. So you don't need another tax to make that happen, mm. number one. Number two, folks, this is just a tax. You know, it's a tax on your health care, which what makes it more expensive, which what drives up the prices, which what means you're going to pay more. So this is a more. referendum. That say, this hey, is a referendum gonna, saying, no, we say don't no. want to pay more for our health tax because you so want to make do? more money. So what do they do? They throw that one, the other one. The one the it throws the other one out. out and then this yeah. one. Yeah, uh, this so one says if the, when this gets on so the then ballot. then they have nothing. Then they have nothing. And then, then they, they have nothing. Over. They have to start all over all again and try and tax us another way. At the legislature. In the legislature. Okay, cool. Which that's kind of what their full-time job is. Let's okay. figure out how we can tax them. So that's that's but the then, first but then referendum. What gets me about this is that some of the same people who are over here on this side, who are the legislators, are actually that's part of that districts and this, that, and the other. They're, they're, they're part and parcel of the people. They're one of those individuals. Well, why didn't they brought this, bring this? The issue thing up? is that once they cross that line into being a representative of other people, something happens. And I don't know whether it's, you know, a frontal lobe thing or what. Well, but they turn into these beings that are no longer the people. Well, they are as indeed. I mean, when they go to the legislature, they just not well, like they're, one party. Well, they're, they're yeah. whatever they are. I'm not even going to grace them with okay. the, well, the, well, 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 the, the graciousness of giving them an R and a D. What they are are people who want power over other people. Hmm. But, uh, but they were elected, though, by the people yeah. here who are, who are complaining. Yeah, right? and at that point is when they stop thinking people knew anything. You know, that was, that was the point. You know, I, after I, the vote, I, I do, then all of a sudden you're I stupid. I feel that you believe that uh, the government is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Is that real or not? Not today. It's government by the enforcer, for the enforcer, and of the enforcer. 
Well, these are people that we elected. I mean, well, no, no, them. not not. Uh, yeah. I didn't elect any of these guys. But they they, they had to. Have been elected. They they got in. Let's put it that way. By people who were knowledgeable, right? I'll say they got in. I'm not going to say how they got there. Oh, okay. We need to talk about that. I just really okay. The that. second referendum okay, on the ballot. Me. This rescinds House Bill, I think it's House Bill 709 or Senate Bill 709, oh, which me. was a gun excuse control me. bill. The, the one we just discussed, was Julie Perry, now she's a representative, I know that. Yeah. Was there anyone else that, that signed off on this with her? Uh, No one who's sponsoring. I don't know whether anybody signed off on it. You can yeah, look it up. There's on, only one person, that, that, that just her name? Uh, She's the only representative. Only who's representative. The, no, this is the chief petitioner. Now, the thing is that, remember, nobody, other representatives don't sign off on referendums but okay saying, she, she's a chief petitioner she's the only name on there is that what you're saying no no she that sal escaval and cedric hayden you, just, you said you you said julia julie Parrish. okay she's on there too she's a representative right okay. but it's it's representatives can sponsor can can not sponsor but can be chief petitioners okay okay but over here with the referendum yeah is when you get other people, other representatives to sign okay. on. That's the only time you get other representatives okay. Okay. to sign on. It's okay. really, this thing is not designed for mm. people to understand it. Mm. Trust me, they mm. don't want you understanding mm. this stuff. The other referendum is rescinding uh, Senate Bill 709. I think it's Senate Bill, I hope. And this is about gun control. Okay. So okay. it's uh, 709 was putting on gun, gun control. This one is taking it back off and mm -hmm. saying, no, we have quite enough. Thank you. Control of the gun is not the problem. Control well, what, well, of the legislature. Wasn't the governor involved in that whole process? There, that one. Seven oh nine. I don't that, know that, about no, that. Made big news. That was in the Argonian front page. Yeah. That you know, basically, she signed off on that deal, big time. Well, she'll sign off on anything. And and, yeah. it, and look, I'm sorry. A person who doesn't even know what her sexuality is, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, doesn't really even know who the hell she is. So. I really don't have much respect for her opinion on much of anything. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. But the gun control, let's, let's talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Yeah, you would pick the one I knew the least about. I just picked this one up okay, yesterday, so, who, so, so who I don't the, know too much about. Who's the chief petitioner? Um, let's see, 302 is. Chief petitioners are Terry Greer, Bill Post, and Mike Nearman. Okay. So okay. it's really good to have. I think Bill Post is a representative. I, like a I don't know my representatives, and, and, got, and you know, I know Nearman is a, is a representative. It's like I wish I knew my Tai Chi moves. That's more important to me than my representatives, <laughs> to be honest with you. Now, the, uh, the okay. only other thing so I'd now, like before you leave okay. that part, I take it there. Oh wait, uh, we've got one more. We've got okay, one what, more. what's the other? We've got one more. Sorry, I've got one more. I forgot about that. Number one, which is the no state funded abortions. No state funding abortion. No state funded abortion. And who's doing this now? Uh, I'm not. Mm, but right now. I'm it, not sure. It's, a, it's the same people who keep, I think, um, oh, I can't remember their name. Anyway, they, again, and uh, look, I don't care what you do with your body. If you want to go get an abortion, I've had two. So, I, you know, it's not like I'm against abortion. I just don't want to pay for it. this is a referendum. Yeah. No, so, this is, this is, um, this is an initiative. Well, this is an initiative. This is an initiative from the people. But I thought you said it was already instituted. Then. No, no. This one, they have been trying this okay. one a lot. Okay. Uh, this one's been over and over. And again, it's it's what it's saying is... But it's okay now in the state. No. it's There is state-funded abortions. Okay. And this is to... This is saying... It's, this is where it gets really complex. This is, this is because this no. is... There's ways things are done and then the ways you stop them from being done. Okay. One of the ways is an initiative. Another way is a referendum. Okay. okay, so it's how the thing was initiated as to which one you use to stop it. Okay, okay. So, okay. so this will this will pretty well. This is an initiative to, an to say one we don't eight. want any state-funded abortions. Okay, okay, that's what. It is. And basically, I'm with them because, frankly. A, you can get a free one. They're sponsored all over the state, so you don't need me to pay for it. And number two, I do not think that that is a viable or good use of my funds, my state or the state funds or the state's time, energy, money, whatever. So no. So, so the law, the law doesn't prevent a private entity from. from no, 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 no. You can look. You can get a free abortion right now. 
So there's no problem. No. You can hold your breath. I could hold my breath and run to a place from here and probably get one. Interesting. Okay. You know, Interesting. Uh, not that who, much time. Who, but who basically was on the referendum? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't know on, on one. On okay. one. I can look it up, but I really don't know. Okay. Well, but Planned the, Parenthood plays a role in it, please. Planned Parenthood, uh, no. Plan, it's about the, it's They're the anti. Other side. They're on, definitely on the other on the side. On the other side. Yeah. Okay. And I okay. just... Uh, Okay, okay. You know, now, I have my before, own thoughts about Before you jump from these aspects of it, I take it these are ones that you, you've been, been involved yeah. in somewhat. Yeah. But I'm sure that there's a, n a number of others. I don't know whether there saying, are or not. Okay. There may be. But and people can go and just type in um, so ballot measures, ballot okay, measures, yeah, Oregon. Okay. Ballot you know. measures, Oregon. Ballot measures, Oregon. Ballot measures. And then, and then the everything will come up. All, that's on, or uh, 2017. And then that sheet comes out, basically. No, so no. The, so the, name, the name of the, uh, the, the deal, the, the name of the initiative, the, the referendum. names and the numbers will come up. And the they chief should. petitioners, right? No, you have chief to have fair. Look, if you want political information, yes. you got to figure out how to be a ferret, okay? Wow. Because the state... The county, the city, none, the neighborhood association, none of them have made it easy for you to acquire information that would really make you a knowledgeable voter, okay? Hmm. Hmm. It's not like it's easy hmm. to get information. Hmm. So you have to know how. Wow. Wow. If you really want to ferret well, stuff Well, I mean, out. That, that is a major concern, though, too. You know what I mean? Should they not make government a little bit, especially the, the paperwork aspect of it? If they made government any more transfer, so the transparent, then we'd be able to see more of what they were doing we didn't like. Okay, you, no, they don't want it any more transparent. Hmm. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. No, hmm. no, no. It's just like, it's exactly like they like it. <laughs> Complex, but, it, but it's like a it's like a foreign entity, as if from the standpoint that uh, they've got total control yeah. and, they, and they're not yeah. elected to office. They are elected to office, and that there's a certain amount of responsibility that goes on the uh, goes to the to the voters. Only you if think? you can only if you can make them take the responsibility. See, we don't have any. What people are forgetting is you can raise your fist and beat the, beat the air all you want, but unless you have a means to hold someone accountable, yeah. so what? Who cares? Well, you got to buy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got this great piece of paper called the Bill of Rights. Burn it. Well, because nobody cares. Nobody can but, enforce but there, it. So uh, what's, but the, what's you the say, point? There are other accessible, like, like, like ads in the newspaper, radio ads and TV ads and things like that, but you got to have some money. Well, not so much money as you have to have influence and power. I know a lot of people don't have any money but have a lot of influence and power. Share that with me a little bit. What do you mean? Like what? Okay. I mean, as I an example, as an example, uh, actually he had a lot of money, but he, he didn't have it nearly as much money as the people he played with. Between, behind Franklin Delano Roosevelt and, and um, you know, Woodrow Wilson, there was another man who was always seen with him, both of those gentlemen, a lot. And his name was Edward Mandel House. Nobody knows who Edward Mandel House is, and you won't find his name anywhere. But he was the person who was the mentor to both of those men. And he was the one who seeded them with a lot of information and ideas and suggested they go this way and that way and this way and that way. And they were former, by the way, they were former president of the United States. Yes, and, okay. you know, they had a mentor someone who guided them in the ways they needed to be guided and in the directions they needed to be guided. Mm -hmm. And this is the way a lot of the politics is done at all levels. You think more so today than, than during that particular time or not? I think it's just been the same throughout. What's changed is the, the education level of the populace, the principled nature of the, pol the, the populace and the ability of the populace to effect change in their own environment. Mm -hmm. Those three things have been astronomically changed. But the process is... No, no, actually much, much for the worse. The people who are elected, they're the same, pardon the expression, assholes, rips, rip-off artists, crazy people and thieves that there were back in 1750, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you had a principal populace who could kind of rein them in check. Now we don't have that. We have an educational system that turns out people who can't even think, mm. who can't even add, who can't even give you change out of a $5 bill mm. when they graduate from high school. Mm. So how much of a, how, how good 
of an electorate, electorate are you going to have with that kind of a mentality going on? And what are they going to elect? Hmm. What are they going to vote but for? When, when you, you said education, and I think, yeah, this is a layperson. I, I'm thinking about when, when the courses that were available, with like American history, there was, there was social studies. Yeah, and, all with an agenda. Uh, all yeah. with the agenda of where we I'm want you to go, to what, you want, what we want you to think, not we want you to be a critical thinker. Education since 1913 has been geared in the, edu in, in the direction of this is the way we want you to think, mm. not we want you to be a critical thinker. Mm. It's been agended and pushed, and it was done starting in 1913. Uh, Carnegie, Pew, Rockefeller, all the big major foundations had billions of dollars that they were allowed to squirrel away in non-taxable foundations, non-profits were created in 1913. Mm. So they put billions and billions of dollars away, non-taxed, in these organizations, and then bought chairs in all the major universities around the United States, and therefore determined where the educational system was going to be going. Mm. So that's how the educational system was co-opted through the use of the non-taxable. Mm. So the non-taxable is just a, a you know, that the non-profit is this little bone they threw to the peasants and said, here, we'll let you play with that one. Well, we're playing the big game up here with the billions and billions of dollars, and we're determining how people will be educated, what they will consider to be truth, how they will be, what will be their world view and their ideas of mm. how things operate on this planet. Mm. They co-opted the whole educational system, so they determined what it was. Wow. And so, that was done through the non-taxable. You're saying books and things of that nature. Anything well, of course. The, the These classroom? are the educators. These are the top educators. They, they bought the chairs, right? So the people who they bought were beholding to those organizations. So they said, yes, sir, yes, sir. We will, will follow your orders as to what you would like us to push in the educational mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. Boy, and they pushed all of the things that we now see that are coming here. Because in, in, in 1850, no, in 18, what was it, between 1850 and 1870, we had the highest rate of literacy in this country, and it was at 97%, and it was bar, color, or class. Mm. Across the board, there was 97% literacy. And then we had the educational system come into creation in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s. And then what happened? Things started going downhill, and now you get a Jefferson High School graduate who can't even read. Hmm. What, you think this happened by accident? We just pour more money in it, it's gonna make it better? No, it's not gonna make it any better, because you've got a one-room classroom in Zimbabwe, and kids can come out of that classroom learning how to read. How come someone je graduating from Jefferson can't. Hmm. That's a problem, I think. Hmm. Hmm. It ain't the classroom, so we don't need more trees torn down and prettier buildings, do we? Well, we just had an election. I mean, those folks look, they seem pretty articulate. Do you think? Uh, yeah, they, they got a lot of this okay. and none of this. Hmm. You know, mouthful of gimme and a handful of much obliged. Remember that term? Oh, that's, that's Remember me. that yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's what they got. A handful of gimme. That's me. Give me your vote. Give me your money. That's major and a concern. handful of much obliged. You know. That's a major concern. Well, it's a concern because people are keep voting the same jerks in. So if you keep voting the same washing machine of launderers in, you're going to get keep getting the same results. But then I'm thinking about it. Important, but we just had an election. And Julia Brem Edwards, you know what I mean? And she was a former board member of mm -hmm. Portland Public Schools. She's, um, she's now the new chair. She got elected. She's the new chair. She comes from the corporate community, mm -hmm. i.e. Nike for that matter. Right. She's, and, uh, you know, and she's had background and whatever. And, and the whole charge is that, you know, we're going to make this better, make yeah. the situation better. Do you better. seriously think one lone soldier is going to make any kind of a difference? Well, she's a chair. Yeah, she's the chair. And how and much the, and power the are they seriously going to give her? Haven't we had these well, chairs she's, she's before? She's from corporate. Well, it's not where she's from. It's how much power are they going to give her? 
Well, they, she's got the power. She's the new chair. Yeah, there she's the new she, chair. They, they didn't Whoop have to vote her do. in. They, they didn't vote her. They voted her in. I mean, you know what? Yeah, but again, Bruce. Power. Are they going to give her any power, or are they just going to give her the chair? You know, I've seen this happen before. It happened, uh, I think it was in New York, uh, about two years ago. Gung ho, this woman came in there. It looks like gangbusters. She was going to tear it up. Wouldn't let her do a yeah, damn it was an thing. Asian, it was an Asian woman, I think. It was. No, this was this was, it was a, an Asian I woman? don't know what she was. I, I don't care Asian about woman. colors yeah, and she, she races. But I, I, I hate to, races. I, could, I think I the could, whole I, thing is just. I could remember. Ugh. I could remember her fighting with the with the unions and whatever down there. I, I yeah. Well, that. it's just whoever they put in who's effective, they dismantle their ability to be effective mm. by disengaging, the, by by threatening the people who might help them. Mm. And helping the people who are going to tear them down. Mm. But I'm but the other thing I was thinking about. I was, I was reminded by a gentleman by the name of uh, Matt uh, Matt Prophet, very interesting guy. He was superintendent of Portland Public School. He was doing some great things and was really going through a, you know going through that whole progressive. Just going. Then all of a sudden one day it was bang. Yeah. Them off. Yeah. We but, found out that you're effective and we don't want you being effective because we got plans for this system. Wow. Wow, interesting. Isn't it kind it, of obvious what's yeah, going on? Yeah. And by the way, you can you can you can check out Matt Prophet on uh, on the history in the history of the of Voters Digest. Uh, I had the opportunity to interview Matt uh, hmm. when he was when he was gone, and he, he did a show, and I did the show, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. Check it out. Anyway, mm, let's go on. Good. Keep going. Yeah. Well, I got one more thing I wanted to talk about, and this is something that I've talked about and um, a lot. And people thought I was kidding. Was I was in California. I don't know whether you can get a shot of that. I was in California in the 50s and the 60s. And there were lots of fires in California. Funny that. No Interesting kidding. that you bring that. Yeah. Up. And you know what? Those bloody fires were put out in a week. Hmm? Was, the fires were put out in a week. And I mean, we had some big, bad butt fires in California in the 60s. And they managed to get them out in a week. And I couldn't figure out, well, how come here's this piddly butt little fire here and it's been burning for when? And we finally found out that, yeah, the policy is let it burn. If it's on federal land, they are actually prevented from going in there with any mechanization and fighting the fire. In other words, we're not going to drop D8 caterpillars in there to clear the land and men with chainsaws. No. We're so, going to drop men with axes so who and off, shovels. Who, who signed off on I it? don't know who signed off on but it. But on federal, but it's federal land. Federal land. Well, it's the federal government, right? So basically... Well, I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but whoever it was should have a lobotomy because mm. they're really someone not said, with someone, it. Someone said that the state was involved in the process and they didn't have enough money, and then, so let it burn. Talk. No, it isn't let it burn, but what they do want to do is get people off the land because, you see, if you burn out the infrastructure, if you burn out people's houses, if you burn out their businesses and you burn out their sources of income, then they have no option except to come into the city and be packed and stacked and controlled. Mm. So a good way of getting people off the land is to fire it. Mm. It's been that, tried for a lot that, of that years. Is quite a, that is another issue. So their whole policy is to let it burn. So if it's to let it burn, then obviously it's not to let it save the land mm -hmm. and save people's businesses mm -hmm. and save people's lives, is it? Tell me something, since, since you, you brought this issue up, Esprit. What do you do with these two young men that, uh, that, uh, that started this fire? What do, you, what do you do with these folks? It was, they, they, they were there. They got two young men, and they admitted it in the whole nine-yard routine. What do you do with them? What do you do, what with, do, you do with them? Hmm. What do you do? What do you do with them? Well, what would be a means of recompense to the people whose property they burned? What, what would make... No, it's, I'm not the person to be asking what should happen to these people. What should ha who, who needs to be asked is how can those people, those two boys, offer some kind of compensation yeah. to the people who lost everything. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, it's not, it, we've got to get out of this punishment mentality and into the compensation mentality of understanding that just because you lock somebody away for 45 years, well, that brings back my dead whatever. Yeah. That brings back my property or my horse yeah. or mm -hmm. my car. 
No. How can this person compensate me for what they've done? So because should. because that makes everybody whole. Yeah, but in all due respect, I, I hear what you're saying. Because even those individuals, who, for instance, who are suffering from asthma and all that other good stuff, yeah. with smoke and the whole yeah. nine yard, they too were were, yeah. were, were caught. And, but, they, and they had to pick up the money, the tab, to pay medical bills. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. It costs quite a so, bit of money. So if we change our mentality from one of punishment right. to one of compensation, okay, okay. Then, then there's all kinds of creative ways so they, to, pay for, so they pay for life, so to speak. Well, let's put it this way. I do don't know. Do I don't know because we haven't even thought about changing our ideas into this kind of a mode. They're asking the question. People are asking the well, question. Well, people are asking I'm the question. The they should what ask themselves. that If they're asking the question out there, then they should ask themselves, what would you want someone to ask of you to compensate someone else you infringed? Mm. Okay. You know, turn the question on yourself. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what would I expect of myself to compensate someone else that I damaged? Mm -hmm. That's quite a question. That is quite a question. Well, look, we got about another minute here, and uh, let's sort of wrap it up from the standpoint of saying that uh, you, you got anything to say in the in, in, in yeah, interesting comments? I think people need to, to just pay more attention to the stuff that they're saying. And be more attentive to the stuff that's coming out of their own mouth. Okay. And be more, I'm, what I'm noticing is people are lying a whole lot. Be more okay. attentive to the things coming out of your mouth. Do I really know what's coming out of my mouth? Or am I just saying it because it feels good? And one other little quick note with reference to people who are wanting to run for office. What do you say to them if they want to run for office? Make sure your mate is on board or don't even think about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't even think about it. If your family and your mate is not on board, your partner is not on board, drop it. Go do something else. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, good. Well, hey, look, folks. You've had it. Yep. There's Renee, and then you have an idea of what the, what the co-host yeah. types are going to be <laughs> on, on this particular show because we really have work to do. We really have yeah. work to do. And hopefully we will educate people who have some good ideas to possibly run for office, if you will. Okay? And some you good ideas me? about solutions. And solutions, solutions, which is very, very key which is very, very key. So thank you very much, folks. We'll see you in the future. I'll see you next week. Renee, thanks. Okay. It's been great. Take care. Back to what you